In inventory management, it is always tricky to manage the financial trade-off between purchasing inventory and the cost of a stock out. This balance essentially depends on two factors. First is fairly obviously demand and understanding the amount of items that will be consumed or bought. And second is the lead time, i.e. the delay between a reorder decision and the stock being available for customers. This is fairly simple until you consider that these two factors are subject to uncertainties themselves. Demand can vary massively due to customer behaviours, which, as we know from that ugly dad trainer trend, can evolve in rather unpredictable ways. And if you've ever waited ages for a delivery to arrive, you will know that variations in lead time can occur, as suppliers or transporters are faced with unplanned difficulties. Unfortunately, if you wait until a stock out occurs, it is normally far too late to place an order. As such, we need a way of controlling this level of uncertainty and being prepared for every possible scenario. This is where safety stock comes in. By acknowledging we need a level of stock to represent uncertainty, we can split our stock requirements into the stock we actually need, or the working stock, and the cushion of stock, which allows us to sleep a little bit better at night. So how do you determine what this buffer should be? Well, unfortunately, there is no universal formula which can be used to calculate safety stock, but many methods account for these random events using a Gaussian distribution. This looks a little bit like the nice bell-shaped curve you can see here. These patterns are observed in tons of physical phenomena for everything from heights to IQ tests. And from a statistical perspective, it is perhaps the simplest approach to account for uncertainty. The idea is that by having many random events, many results will statistically converge to a normal distribution. A good example of this can be shown with my new toy here. As there are so many balls and they have an equal probability of moving left or right, you can see that they accumulate into an approximate normal distribution. As such, you can take an educated guess as to what are the most likely scenarios that you need to cover with your safety stock and adjust according to the importance of the product. So where does this approach fall down? Well, the problem is that it assumes that demand is a succession of independent, normal, random variables. This example is very controlled and as such, mass divergence cannot occur, whereas in reality, demand is often influenced by external random factors, such as these patterns we discussed in our seasonality episode. Also, as far as human affairs are concerned, we don't act randomly. People essentially follow the crowd, particularly as they are now influenced by modern communication, such as news, social media, adverts, and even weather forecasts. As such, these balls wouldn't really decide their routes individually, and our Gaussian curve does not provide an adequate approximation of the hit or miss scenarios that occur in reality. So to conclude, safety stock is a great idea and having a level of buffer will help account for the randomness of business. But as supply chains are driven by these things that aren't completely random, a more sophisticated approach is required. So that's everything for this week. If you've got any questions, make sure you drop us a comment below and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.